Okay, good morning, everybody. This is the um, sit down and be quiet notice, please. <laughs> I was very polite there, wasn't I? I was not. Oh, it's lovely that we can meet together, and it's lovely just to meet up and have a bit of a chat. Um, welcome. Welcome to our all-age service. Um, I'm Reverend Pauline Hart. I'm the associate priest here. Um, and I promise I'm not going to start throwing lots of multicolored balls all over the place today. It's a bit of a shame, a bit of a shame, isn't it? But, I've, yeah, I've done it once. Yeah, how many times can I do that? Um, they welcome. Um, we have got the crash in the corner. Um, I have got some coloringy bits and I would appreciate oh, there's some coloring that can be done around creation but there is also a, a sheet just for drawing about new creation because we're in the season of creation tide we're in the season of creation creation tide um, and part of that is about new creation so if anybody wants to do any drawing that, that includes the adults actually if any of you want to do some drawing of the new creation, or do some colouring, do, um, do help yourself. Um, and actually, while I'm at it, I'll do some quick, the other quick notices. Um, rotors, yeah, that's the thing, we're being back in church, we have all these rotors. Um, rotors are at the back, there are still gaps, particularly um, for stewards for next week. So we do need um, somebody to, to be welcoming people in and stewarding next week. There are also gaps for teas and coffees. So we haven't got teas and coffees today because there was nobody on the rotor. But next week we will. And next week's a bit special because we're going to have a bit of a farewell for John Harper after the service. So do please stay for that. The notice, it's in your notice sheet. Um, I think that's... Is that all I need to do? Okay. Let's just remind ourselves why we're here. Let's just settle ourselves and be present in this place. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. How majestic is your name in all the earth. You dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. In your hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of every human being. As your son made the multitude to sit down on the green grass and fed them with the bread of life, Make us to lie down in green pastures and lead us beside still waters so that, like a tree planted by water which does not fear the heat but whose lives shall stay green, we may be refreshed and sustained in you and honour the everlasting covenant you have established with your creation for you have seen that it is very good. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That prayer is from a Christian charity called Arosha, who promotes our engagement with creation. They, um, promote fair they promote fair trade, they pro promote sustainable ways of living, and they also promote something called Eco Church, which you will be hearing more about in the coming weeks. But they are um, a very valuable charity. In the beginning, before time, before people, before the world began, God was, here and now, among us, beside us, clearer than air and closer than breathing. God is. 
all that is to come when we have turned to dust and human knowledge has been completed. Not despairing of earth, but delighting in it. Not condemning the world, but redeeming it through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. God was, God is, and God will be. And we're going to stand to sing our first song. And we've got the band for all our songs today. So please stand and sing and join in. Keep your masks on. Here we are to worship. be seated. Uh, I forgot to mention um, everything you need for the service should be on the screen. Um, where they're using liturgy, the white stuff is for me if you respond with the bright yellow bold. That's generally how it works. <laughs> but anything could happen. And frequently does. So, as I said, we are starting the season of creation, uh, creation tide. 
Something we started to do a couple of years back, just before Andrew joined us, and it was actually at his suggestion when I was talking to him when he'd been appointed but hadn't joined us about what we were going to do in that first term. He suggested Creation Tide, and I'm really pleased. It's, it's, I think it's becoming an established part of our calendar. It runs from this Saturday through to the beginning of October, which is the Feast of St Francis of Assisi, but it's also when we have our Harvest Festival. So over the next few weeks, we will be thinking particularly about God's creation and about the environment. And particularly as we are thinking towards the end of October, um, there is the COP26 conference in Glasgow, which is going to be absolutely crucial to how things go on this planet. Um, and I've been sort of quite challenged on this. I mean, the other year I did go on one of the Extinction Rebellion, well, a couple of Extin Extinction Rebellion marches. Um, so it's something that's quite dear to my heart. But I've been really challenged lately about where care for creation fits in. Now, some years back, um, as part of the... Um, some studying I was doing about discipleship, I did a bit of a look at the great commandments. Obviously, the go, you know, Jesus, before he ascends into heaven, tells his disciples to go out into all the world and to uh, make disciples and to baptise in the name of Jesus. But if we look at the version of the Great Commission in Mark's Gospel, which is the Gospel that we are focusing on in the, in the coming weeks. The Great Commission in Mark's Gospel is really interesting. He said, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the Gospel to all creation. Pre go to the, all the world and preach the good news to all of creation. Now, back a few years back, as I said, when I was looking at, 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 at this, I was challenged and moved that my discipleship, my love of God, and God's love for me, is not just about churchy stuff, and what we do on Sundays. It's not just even about what this building is used for in the rest of the week, our outreach to older people, younger people, and, and everything else that has gone on in this building. Um, it was about how we lived our life, Monday to Saturday, and if we're at work, how we, how we handle our work lives, how we handle our social lives, how we handle our lives with our family. God is interested in all of that. And that was quite an important revelation. But more recently, and particularly with this um, from Mark's Gospel, that understanding that God isn't just interested in what we do on, in church, not just interested in how we live our lives, but is as interested in the whole of creation. Jesus didn't just come to save me or you didn't just come to save humanity, he came for the whole cosmos, the whole of creation. The next... Sorry. Now, I mean, many of you know I'm a bit of a fan of St. Francis. Um, uh, I mean, he's a bit of a nutter, but he was, yeah, he's, he, he was absolutely amazing. And we get this story of um, him preaching to the birds... And when I was talking about this at the 8 o'clock, we did have um, a rather raucous crow or something making quite a noise out there, um, sort of trying to join in the preaching. Great. Um, anyway, St. Francis preached to the birds and to the wolf. He preached to creation. But that isn't necessarily you know, what we're expected to do. Creation itself doesn't use words. So in our engagement with this creation, as we preach the good news, 
It's in our actions and our care for God's creation. It's not just in how nice we are to each other on a Sunday in church, of all the good things we do related to the church during the week. It's not just how we are with our friends and family and colleagues and, and people we meet in the, in the supermarket. It's about how we look after creation. That's just as important. And that's what we're going to be thinking about and looking at today and over the next few weeks. But I hope that sort of bit of an, there's a bit of an epiphany goes on that actually we broaden out our understanding of God's love for us. That we are challenged that the whole of scripture, the whole of the life of Jesus, the work of the Holy Spirit is about engaging with the whole of God's creation. So, we're just going to take a moment to let that sink in a bit. And then we're going to have a time of confession. A time when we just say sorry to God. Each thing we have received, from God it came. Each thing we enjoy, from God it comes. For each thing we pray for, from God it will be given. God of life, you are the source of all goodness and the satisfaction of all our desires. Our understanding of you is small. Our desire to do your will is weak. Thank you for putting a bit of oomph in that. <laughs> you enlivened it. The seed you have planted has yet to bear fruit. But first, create in us clean hearts. In your sight, we unburden ourselves of guilt, of anger, of fear, of pride, of hardness of heart, of weakness of intention. Jesus, Son of Mary. Jesus, Saviour of the world. Christ, King of glory. In the common path of our calling, whether it be easy or uneasy to tread, whether it be bright or dark to follow, let your perfect guidance protect us. Be a shield against all that may deceive us. Be a healer for all that may harm us. Be a witness of all that might trouble us. Be a friend to all who are dear to us. And may God, who loved creation so much that he sent his son to be our saviour. Forgive you your sins and make you holy to serve him in all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brilliant. We need good loud amens. I think everybody ought to be copying you. Right. <laughs> we now got another song indescribable and I managed to say it <laughs> so please stand
From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea. Creations revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring. Every creature unique in the song that it sings, all explaining, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All powerful, untamable, awestruck. To our knees as we humbly proclaim, you are amazing God, who has told every lightning bolt where it should. Of amazing God. You see the depths of my heart and you love me the same. Amen. Please be seated. We're going to have our Bible readings now. The first is a psalm which we will do responsively. Um, the readings we are using during this, I'm going a bit echoey here, the reason that the readings we're using for Creation Tide are not ones specifically chosen for about creation. We're using the normal Le Church of England lectionary readings for this month. So the challenge is for us who are preaching and for you who are listening is to see how this all relates, how some of the familiar stories, which we don't think about in relation to creation, actually is speaking into the bigness of God. So the set psalm for today is Psalm 125. So again, if you will uh, respond in, with the yellow. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. 
as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forevermore. The scepter of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted to the righteous, for then the righteous might use their hands to do evil. Lord, do good to those who are good, to those who are upright in heart. But those who turn to crooked ways, the Lord will banish with the evildoers. Peace be on Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And even that psalm, did you notice? It's the, it's the talk of the mountains. And that peace be on Israel. It's not just the people of Israel, it's the land of Israel. And the land is important. Creation is important. So it's there, woven all the way through our scripture. But now Meg will come and bring us our gospel reading. This morning's reading is taken from the book of Mark, chapter 7, verses 24 to 37. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it. Yet he couldn't keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, born in Syrian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First, let the children eat all they want, he told her. For it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk. And they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spat and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephatha, which means be opened. At this the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone. But the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Meg. Our Heavenly Father, be in the words that I speak, in the words that each of us hear, and open and change our hearts and our minds and our lives for you. Amen. At the beginning, I said I'd been challenged to look at how God looks at us in relation to the rest of creation. I've been challenged just how big a picture it is and a bit scared, actually probably more than a bit scared, about you know, what is going on in our environment and what's happening to 
creation on this planet. But the more I look at scripture in the light of this, the more I see that God's care and concern is with us. Humanity is particularly precious to God. We are made in his image in ways that the rest of creation is not. But we are part of creation. And I think science has actually taught us so much. And that is, we we can look through the eyes of science and help that open our eyes to scripture more and more. It's there, but perhaps we haven't always seen it. At the eight o'clock service this morning, we used the long version and traditional version of the creed. And it says, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, that's Jesus, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven. That is teaching us that it was only for humanity, actually women as well as men, but for the whole of humanity that Jesus came. But actually, we've almost got to say, has the church missed something for quite a, you know, for hundreds of years in that focus on humanity. Perhaps if our creed had been saying to us for centuries, who, ca- who, who, for, uh, for, who for creation and for our salvation came down from heaven and was made incarnate, would we have looked at the world, would our culture, which has been touched by the Christian faith, have worked things out differently. We won't know. But it is important that we allow our vision to be enlarged. And as I said, we are using the lectionary gospel read, the lectionary readings. So the challenge today is how does Jesus healing the daughter of the Syrophoenician woman What does that have to say about creation and God's love for the whole of creation? Now, the background to the story is Jesus had been being quite successful in Galilee. He had been attracting a lot of attention. He had been doing amazing things, saying amazing things. And he goes from Galilee across to Tyre, probably for a bit of peace and quiet, a bit of respite. Somewhere where he could just be for a while. Because that region was at least partly non-Jewish. So he was hoping to be left alone. But even there, his fame was known. Even there, people knew that there was something important going on. And we know that this will not be the only time that Jesus and his disciples are surprised that the faith and understanding of those outside the Jewish faith at that time actually got it more than those who were inside. Now, this story of the Syrophoenician woman and the way that Jesus speaks to her is really difficult for us to hear. Some of it is because we are listening with 20th century ears and there's nuances to it that we don't, from the first century, that we don't get. And some of those we can only guess at because culture and cultural references and the way that we understand things changes. And some have argued um, that actually the woman here teaches Jesus something. Some will almost say that Jesus was racist and the woman enlightened him. 
that he was indoctrinated by his own culture and was blind to those who were different. And in her response, she challenges Jesus on this. I, th I think that's, that's hard. It's hard to perhaps see Jesus in that light. And I'm not sure personally I can quite. For me, I am comfortable with the idea that Jesus grew in his understanding of what, who he was and what his ministry was and what it meant for him and for people. I am comfortable with that it was a journey for him. I'm not sure I can cope um, yeah, with him being so sort of evil, almost. We know that Jesus was without sin, but being, but not knowing something and not fully understanding something is not in itself sinful. But I'm saying I'm not comfortable with the idea that Jesus was that ignorant and that rude. And I don't think it ties up with the other times when he does reach out and accept and even celebrate those outside of the faith. Others will see this conversation between Jesus and the woman as a bit of banter, almost sort of flirtatious. Jesus with a bit of a twinkle in his eye. And I must admit, sometimes when Jesus is dealing with me, he definitely has to have a twinkle in his eye. There's no way, you know, that he could, you know, that is how he deals with me. It's normally, come on, Pauline. Yeah, what are you doing? What have you done? Come on. And uh, there's an affection, there's a love that comes through from Jesus. And the way that Jesus perhaps engages with this woman is something of her personality. He deals with her as she is, as the sort of woman she is, and works with that. And that's, that's important. The way that we talk about faith, the way that we deal with stuff, it's important that the way we do it makes sense to the person that we are engaging with. And we do it in a way that, that, that works for them. And, so, and it's certainly something of how I've experienced Jesus um, in my life. Was, but on the other hand, was Jesus actually testing her? Being deliberately rude to her so that um, you know, she has to come out and say, make, make this declaration of, of faith. I can't say I'm totally comfortable with that. I don't think that Jesus deals with us like that. But, but sometimes we are allowed to be tested for... Um, and our faith will grow through testing. But I, I, I don't think that Jesus would test somebody in that way. So I'm not, I'm not going to stand here and tell you exactly what was going on in that conversation. And I don't think anybody could. And you might have other ideas of what was happening. But I think one of the things that we can learn from it is that we can, we can learn to engage with things in a way that takes on board the situation that we're in. That our understanding of scripture, our understanding of who Jesus is, can be challenged and we can grow in it. Our understanding can be broadened. We don't leave our brains outside the church when we come in. And we don't leave our spiritual lives inside the church when we go out. And I think from this story and the way 
that the woman challenges Jesus. She also teaches us that it's okay to be brave when we speak to Jesus. It's okay to talk back to him a bit. To say to Jesus, okay, what on earth do you think you are doing? We can say that to Jesus. When what's going on in the world is just so difficult, we can say to him, what is this all about? And actually, not so much in our psalm today, but many of our psalms are cries of anguish and pain, questioning. And I think when we look at what's happened with COVID and and what's that inflicted on us, and what climate change is doing, and it's not going to get any better, but we might be able to stop it getting too much worse but we can cry out to God in all of this a that you know it doesn't seem fair but also because we just the enormity of it is beyond us we can cry out to God I think we can also learn from this passion passage that it's okay to have our thinking challenged and while we don't see God, creation as being our God. Us valuing creation as God's creation, of which we are part, is an insight that we perhaps need to allow to grow more in us. And perhaps we can also be challenged by the idea that people outside of the church or our religious grouping may understand things more than we do. And maybe even more committed to what they believe in than than we are. Now, some of you know, last year I did go on a couple of the um, Extinction Rebellion marches. I haven't done anything this year. And whatever you think of Extinction Rebellion, those people, some of them, well, most of them, have an understanding... And, and it's not just a, I mean, there's a scientific understanding, but they also have a spiritual understanding of creation. And they are very committed to doing something about it. Now, we might not fully agree with what they're doing, but their level of commitment, dare I suggest, is beyond what a lot of us manage in our life of faith are we prepared to super glue ourselves to the road or to a building for our faith to be arrested whether that yeah and that some of not just about creation but for our faith so There are huge challenges. And I was challenged very much the other day when I was at at a a seminar on all of this, that actually as Christians our message is is not negative. It's not all negative. The challenge is, can we be climate changers? Can we change the climate of fear? The climate of greed that keeps our system growing and the impact on the environment increasing. Can we break, can we be, change the climate of all those things? Can we, change, can we be climate changes? Can we be, bring in a p- climate of peace and cooperation, of working together with others, of developing our community, our communities so that we handle God's creation in a better way. Can we change the climate? And beyond that, I think our hope that we can 
is that we know that in God we are new creations. We look forward to the new creation when there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. That isn't going to come about because we've destroyed this planet. That isn't what that is about. We look forward to, to God coming and our new heaven and new earth and being that new creation. But in Jesus, it has already started. And in our lives of faith, we are new creations. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Now, I think I'm going to switch things around here. Sorry, Phil. We're going to sing, I am a new creation. Yeah, I was warned it was going to be a slightly different version. I like that. I was also told I might like it. So, as I said, I'm a bit of a fan of um, St. Francis. So we're going to say together the Canticle of the Creatures. St. Francis is one of these people who really got 
that God was interested in the whole of creation and that we are part of all of creation and that we preach to and with all of creation. So, most high, all-powerful, good Lord, to you be praise, glory, honour and all blessing. Only to you, most high, do they belong and no one is worthy to call upon your name. May you be praised, my Lord, with all your creatures, especially Brother Son, through whom you lighten the day for us. He is beautiful, radiant, with great splendour. you most Be praised, my Lord, for Sister Moon and the stars, clear and precious and lovely, they are formed in heaven. Be praised, my Lord, for brother wind, for air and clouds, clear skies and all weathers, by which you give sustenance to your creatures. Be praised, my Lord, for sister water, who is very useful, humble and precious and pure. Be praised, my Lord, for brother fire, by whom the night is illumined for us. He is beautiful and cheerful, full of power and strength. Be praised, my Lord, for our sister Mother Earth, who sustains and governs us and produces diverse fruits and coloured flowers and grass. Be praised, my Lord, by all those who forgive for love of you and who bear weakness and tribulation. Blessed are those who bear them in peace, for you, most high, they will be crowned. Be praised, my Lord, for our sister, the death of the body, from which no one living is able to flee. Woe to those who are dying in mortal sin. Blessed are those who are found doing your most holy will, for the second death will do them no harm. Praise, Praise and bless my Lord, and give him thanks, and serve him with great humility. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We now have our time of prayer. So we come to pray for others and there will be parts of this time where I will leave a pause for you to add your own prayer in. We pray that those in need of any sort put their trust in the Lord. Especially pray for the people of Afghanistan. For all nations experiencing the effects of drought, flood, wildfires and hurricanes. Pray for nations with severe food shortages that mean their people are starving. Pray that the governments of those nations might do all they are able to help and that any aid is distributed fairly. Pray for people who are ill in body, mind or spirit. May they know your love and healing power enfold in them. Especially continue to pray for Ronnie, for Penny and Ian and others known to us. Give thanks for when the healers of 
this world, the doctors and the nurses and the counselors and everyone else who contributes are able to work with you to bring healing to others. And finally, pray for ourselves that we might be a people who carry the Lord's love out to those in need, wherever and whoever they are. Pray that our life might be practical as well as in words. These and all our prayers we offer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Barbara. And for Creation Tide, there will be a prayer in our notice sheet each week. Um, if you'd like to pray that each day, there'll be a different one each week through Creation Tide and then also up to the COP26 conference. So our prayer, our Creation Tide prayer this week, God, creator of our common home, your boundless love includes everyone. Open our hearts and minds to your generous will that we may proclaim Christ's love and justice through words and actions. May we serve the needs of our neighbours within the community of all creation and may justice flow down like rivers. Amen. And we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we have our final song, When I in Awesome Wonder. Let's start this song. Thy path throughout the universe's 
Save him to die, I scarce can take it. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he fled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul. to have the band back. <laughs> and again, I was warned that it would be slightly different, and I love well, we it. Yeah, well, it was, it was lovely to have... have <laughs> it was lovely to have that change in, in tempo and atmosphere to it. So, as we go... Is it true that God loves the whole of creation? Amen. This is true. Is it true that God loves all people? Amen. This is true. Is it true that Jesus came to make all things new? Amen. This is true. Then let us go as those whom God has called to bear witness to the love and justice of heaven to be beacons of light and signs of transformation, climate changes. For such is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. And we say the grace to one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Please be seated. Take a moment. I'm sat. We haven't got coffee, but just take a moment and then be free. You know, you're free to leave whenever you're ready. <laughs>